Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of the 700 Club. We've got a terrific program for you today, and uh, we want to lead off with the fact that the president is going to talk to Congress. And the question is, will the Democrats turn their backs? If they hoot, they'll get thrown out of the chamber because that's against the rules. But will they respect the President of the United States or is this partisanship going to be rancorous tonight as he addresses the nation? He's going to lay out an agenda that issues like tax cuts in the economy, rebuilding America's defenses, and cutting government spending. Here's Wendy. The President will need help from Congress to get his his plans passed into law and Republican leaders say they're on board. Jennifer Wishon brings us the story from the White House. For President Donald Trump, big rallies are the wind in his sails. At his first address to a joint session of Congress, he'll have a grand stage, but the crowd can be tough. Instead of his rough say anything rhetoric, Look for the president to strike a tone of unity and renewal. Senior White House officials say he wants the American people to know help is on the way and that he's at work addressing real problems facing real Americans. The president is already making his goals clear. We're going to do more with less and make the government lean and accountable to the people. We can do so much more with the money we spend. He'll focus his speech on creating economic opportunity through reducing regulations that weigh down businesses and lowering taxes on both companies and individuals. He'll also dedicate time to explaining how he'll enhance national security, a promise punctuated by the budget he'll soon release to Congress. This budget will be a public safety and national security budget. In a budget outline released ahead of his speech, Trump proposes boosting the U.S. defense budget by $54 billion. That's a 10% boost. We must ensure that our courageous service men and women have the tools they need to deter war and when called upon to fight in our name, only do one thing, win. We have to win. We have to start winning wars again. The president's budget is merely a guide. Ultimately, all spending decisions are left up to Congress. But it shows Americans he's willing to back up his promises with dollars and cents. We are taking his words and turning them into policies and dollars. He'll have to convince Democrats to work with him. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the Trump agenda is exactly the same as the Republican agenda. I think for uh, virtually all Republicans, the chance to actually do things that we felt would move the country in the right direction and have the president sign them into law is a pretty exciting prospect. The president isn't expected to touch entitlements like Social Security and Medicare, which may eventually put him at odds with some GOP lawmakers. For the moment, investors are looking for details. Assurances the president will make good on his promises that have led to the Trump bump on Wall Street. However, don't expect many details about tax relief right away, although the administration does hope to pass its tax reform package by August. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, the White House. Well, you know, as a piece of the GDP, actually the percentage of going to defense is still relatively low. It sounds like a tremendous amount of money. But uh, he's, uh, he's increasing by about $54 billion. But when you look at the gross domestic product of America, which is enormous, the percentage being spent on defense is still quite low. When you figure John Kennedy took about 10% or more uh, in his budget, well, we're not even close to that now, maybe 3 or 4% of the GDP. And so there's room to grow, but th this is a good bite. He's going to take a few years to get the defense to where it needs to be. Because, you know, they don't have enough planes to fly to practice. They don't have enough gasoline to put in the planes. They don't have enough ammunition. The planes are old, and they've got to renew them. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big you know, challenge, but he's going to work on it. Well, President Trump's plan to increase defense spending comes as the U.S. is facing several deadly threats around the world, from the Middle East to Asia. Our John Jessup has that. And Pat, among those threats, the growing nuclear programs in North Korea and Iran, and the brutal terrorism of ISIS. George Thomas has that story. In the Middle East, ISIS continues on its path of death and destruction. The president says defeating the group and keeping Americans safe at home and abroad is a top priority. The Department of Defense presented its preliminary plan 
to the White House today.